let's go! Little Red Tractor, he's king of the fields Getting his jobs done with Stan at the wheel He's not the biggest, but he's a hero Little Red Tractor, let's go! With Sparky and Nipper and Big Blue too And lots more friends in tow Little Red Tractor, let's go! He might be little, but he's the best. Watch out for Little Red Tractor, Stan and all their friends on CBeebies. Who's as red as a fire engine? As big as a house? And more fun than, well, just anyone you've ever met before. Hi, my name is Emily Elizabeth. And this is Clifford, my big red dog. And now, Clifford is yours to own on video. Clifford needed Emily. Hearted, full of great ideas, but above all else, fun. Big red fun. Oh, was the best friend anyone could know. He's the greatest dog ever. I really think so. Cliff is so loyal. He's there when you call. I love Clifford, the big red dog. Why is Clifford so big? Why does he live on Burwell Island? And who are his friends? Well, now you can find out in Clifford, the big red dog. It was so much fun, he's a friend to us all. I love Clifford, the big red dog. Ooh. Clifford is now yours to own on video. So join Emily Elizabeth and all her friends to get to know Clifford, the big red dog. If you like action, comedy, <laughs> drama, <laughs> wit, charm, and repartee, then you'll love <laughs> boom, boom. my brand new video and DVD, Bezel Brush Unleashed. Boom, boom. Ah, the smell of the grease paint, the roar of the crowd, the butt of my jokes, Mr. Stephen. <laughs> well, now, some of my favourite moments and all your favourite people can be yours to watch again and again including loads of somewhat exclusive bits I've never shown you before. Yeah! Love my jokes? How could you not? <laughs> well, check out my all-new joke book. Wonder what I have to deal with when making the show? Well, check out Bezel's bloopers. Who is Cliff? You also get my Boom Boom and Bart songs. <laughs> and loads more fun and madness. Pick in, pick in. Bezel Brush, that's me. Unleashed for the first time ever on video and DVD. In all good stores. And none of the dodgy ones. Introducing the brand new Transformers Armada. Prepare yourself as the heroic Autobots and the evil Decepticons invade Earth to battle for ultimate control over the Minicons. You have something of mine. Give it back immediately or you shall suffer the consequences. Stand down, Megatron. Optimus Prime. Meet the courageous leader of the Autobots, Optimus Prime. Optimus who? And his brave allies, Rat, <laughs> Carlos, All right. and Alexis. Let's get this show on the road. Together they battle the corrupt forces of the Decepticons leader, Megatron. I have given you your chance, Earthling. The fate of the world is at stake. <laughs> and let the games begin! The brand new Transformers Armada series. Collect them now on video and DVD.
black and white cat Early in the morning Just as day is dawning He picks up all the post bags in his van Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock ring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man. It was a cloudy morning in Greendale, but as Pat set out along the valley on his way to the village post office, it brightened up. A large van was parked in the narrow road. It was Sam's mobile shop. It was going to be a tight squeeze getting past. Come on, straighten up. Come on, you could get a bus through there. Plenty of room. Hello, Sam. Thanks. Could you, uh, could you give these to Mrs. Atkinson, please? Right, old Pat. Mind how you go. Oh, dear. I think we're stuck. It's all that rain, it's made the ground boggy. Hello, Pat. Still here? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm stuck in the mud. I'll give Pete Fogg a shout as I go past. He can tow you out with his tractor. Hang on. Thanks, Sam. Ah, uh, well. Looking at life through a farmer's eyes, always aware of the changing skies, the wind and the rain, they all make their claim as he plows and he sows and sets seeds into rows. He sees all the wonders that nature can bring as he works all the year to bring rich harvests in. Looking at life through a farmer's eyes, always aware of the changing skies. Hedgerows with birds, wild animals and trees. In the bright summer sun, he sees busy honeybees. And he's working with nature, as all round the farm. He'll try to make sure good things come to no harm. Summer and winter, seasons all through. There's never a time when there's nothing to do Setting the crops and preparing the land He always can do with a good helping hand Looking at life through a farmer's eyes Always aware of the changing skies he works between forests and valleys and hills For the flat even plains with an unbroken view But wherever it is, still the farmers can claim That they work for our bread with their harvests of grain Wherever it is, the farmers can claim 
that they work for our bread with their harvests of Peter came at last. Hello, Peter. Can you tow me out, please? <laughs> My van's stuck in the mud. Easy! Sam said you'd need help. Uh, I'll just back up. Now then, uh, just tie it on there. Right. All right. Ready? Bye. Thanks a lot. Pat was on his way again. Morning. Morning, Pat. You're a bit late today. Yes. I got held up down by Atkinson's. I was trying to get past Sam's van, and I got stuck on the grass verge. Then I had to wait for Peter Fogg to come and pull me out with his tractor. Oh, a good thing he did. Look, Major Forbes' bull. It won first prize at the county show. Isn't it a magnificent animal? Have you seen it? <laughs> no, and I don't think I want to either. There's a letter for the Major, so you might meet the bull. Better keep a sharp lookout. I'd run a mile if I saw it. Cheerio. Ted Glenn was waving to Pat to make him stop. Some fools left a gate open. I bet it's those campers. The sheep have got into the clover field. It'll kill them if they eat too much. Uh, can you give me a hand to drive them back? Yes, of course I will. I used to work on a farm when I was a lad. Have they gone far, then? You can see them, up there. They've spread out a bit. We'd better get after him. Hang on, Pat. <laughs> We've left a gate open now. We're as bad as the campers. I'll shut it. Uh, you go that way, and I'll go this. Right. Was warm work. What's that funny noise? Hey up! It's that bull! Run! Oh! Oh! Hey! Wait for me! 
What's up, Ted? Oh, it's my ankle. Oh, by gum, it does hurt. Ouch! I can't get up. I think I've broken it. Now what are we going to do? You can't sit here till it gets better. I'd better go and get Dr Gilbertson from the village. Won't be long. Pat gave Dr Gilbertson her letters and told her about Ted's broken ankle. Oh dear, my car's in Pencaster being serviced, said the doctor. Then I'll take you in my van. So Dr Gilbertson brought her bag. She sat in Jessie's place. Ted was glad to see the doctor. Oh! Ooh! Ouch! She soon bandaged his ankle up. It wasn't broken, just badly sprained. Try not to put too much weight on it now. Pat's walking stick came in handy. Thanks, Pat. Oh. Eee, by gum. You'll have to ride amongst the letters, Ted. Easy now. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Jess rode on Dr. Gilbertson's knee until they arrived back at the surgery. Bye, Pat. Ted was glad to get home. You all right now? I'll manage. Thanks for helping. Cheerio. Bye. Pat was on his way again. He still had a lot of letters and parcels to deliver. Hello, Alf. Hello, Pat. Uh, thanks for getting the sheep back. It's the same thing every year. Gates left open all over the place. We'll have to have words with them campers, won't we, Dot? What a morning, Jess. Rounding up sheep, dodging bulls, fetching doctors. And now we're late with all this post. We'll have to get a move on this afternoon. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Um. And his black and white cat Early in the morning Just as day is dawning He picks up all the post bags in his van 
Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. One morning, Miss Hubbard, who was always up bright and early, was surprised to see Pat's van still outside his house. Goodness me, Pat should be away by now. I wonder what's wrong. Pat, are you there? Pat! Pat! Cooey! You! Pat, it's late! Ah, there you are! Still in bed, Pat. What about the post? Oh dear, is it that late? I must have overslept. Wretched alarm clock. Morning, Pat. Must go or I'll be late as well. Pat rushed out without any breakfast. I'd better get my skates on. They'll all wonder where I've got to. Oh no, my hat. Come on, Jess. Don't just sit there. Oh! What are you playing at, Jess? Do you think you're Postman Jess or something? Come on, let's get moving. What a start to the day. That alarm clock couldn't have gone off. We're over an hour late already. It was past nine o'clock at the post office. I wonder why Pat is so late, said Mrs. Goggins. Anyway, it gives me time to repair this parcel. Is that him? Oh! It's not my day today, is it? Good morning, Mrs. Goggins. Sorry I'm late. It's that alarm clock. Didn't go off, you know. As bad as this parcel. Just look at it. I do wish people would wrap them up properly. This is a right old mess. Can I help? Oh, my hat. This stuff sticks to everything. Gosh, it's all over my fingers. Ooh, yuck. That's really sticky. Oh, dear, dear. Oh. Oh, dear. You're as bad as me today. All thumbs. There you are. I think it will hold. It's just one of those days, said Pat. Thank you. Wish me luck. I need it today.
there's Ted. That messy parcel is for him. We'll give it to him before it falls to bits. Hi, Ted. Got a parcel for you. Ted! Oh, hello, Pat. Is that my parcel? It'll be those spare parts I ordered. Whoops! Oh, no! Dozens of nuts and bolts, cogs and screws rolled away into the grass. Oh, dear. I'll never find them all. Not in this long grass. Hold on. I'll give you a hand. That's one bit, but what about all the others? Bill Thompson had just set out from home on his way to the village when he saw Pat and Ted searching for something in the grass. Have you lost something? He said. Yes, a lot of nuts and bolts. I've got just the thing for that at home. I'll go and get it. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> we'll still be here, said Ted. What's he on about? said Pat. <laughs> Search me. Is this one of them? Mm, no, looks like a rusty nail. <laughs> like this. Rubbish. We're getting nowhere. I know. Look, the lad's back already. And he's got a magnet with him. <laughs> Hope it's a good one or it won't be much use. Have you found much? said Bill. Well, no, not yet. This is really powerful. Picks up anything metal. You have a try. Oh, thanks. It started to pick up all the metal bits from the grass, as well as Pat's glasses. Over here, said Ted. I hope they're all there, said Pat. I'll count them, said Ted. Thanks, Pat. Cheerio. Turn up, Pat. Thanks for your help. Here's another bit. Thanks, Bill. That magnet came in handy. <laughs> what a day, said Pat to Jess. We'll never get through at this rate. His next stop was Thompson Ground. Alf was busy mending the barn wall. Morning, Alf. Sorry I'm late. Got some letters for you. Just leave them on the table. Dorothy's away feeding the chickens. Nothing urgent, is there? No, just a few bills. Oops! Hey, up, what are you doing? Sorry, Alf. Hang on. Hold it steady! Not that way, the other way. I said the other way! Oh! Ouch! Oh, my hand. Oh, it does hurt. Ah! Oh, gosh, that's painful. You all right, Pat? Oh, dear. Well, don't move. I'll go and get something for it. Just then, Mrs. Thompson came back from feeding the chickens. Dear me, whatever have you been up to, Pat? Not looking where I was going, I'm afraid. Walking into ladders. You mustn't make it a habit. Now hold still and I'll bind it up for you. But you won't be able to drive today, you know. You'll have to rest it. Thanks, but what about all my letters? said Pat. Just then, Sam Waldron drove his mobile shop into the farmyard. He noticed Pat's bandaged hand. Hello, what happened to you? They told him about Pat's accident and that he was unable to drive. Why don't we put your letters and parcels in my van, said Sam. 
We can do our rounds together. Yes, and then the post will get through after all, said Pat. Thanks, Sam. That's a marvellous idea. Come on, Jess. You'll be all right in there. Thanks, Alf. That's the lot now. Bye. We'd better get Dr. Gilbertson to take a look at that wrist, said Sam. It was their first stop anyway. Won't be long. Hello, Pat. Goodness me, what have you been doing? It's my wrist. Come on in. Let's have a look at it. Ouch! Is this where it hurts? Ouch! Ah, well, it's not broken. You'll be all right in a day or two. I'll just give you something to soothe it. You'll soon be able to drive. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Cheerio. Bye. No need to worry. Nothing broken. For twice a week there comes a mobile shop up to the valley. valley. And folks are delighted when he comes around. For it always will save a long journey to town from the valley. The valley, he's always on time as he rings out his chime in the valley. valley. Mothers can plan with a great shopping list. If he cut out his service, oh, he'd be terribly missed in the valley. The valley. What the people will want in the valley. valley He buys in the town Then he takes things around All his customers know that He won't let them down In the valley The valley Thanks for the lift, Sam. It's been a funny old day, but tomorrow, well, tomorrow's another day. That's the stuff, Pat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 boom. Black and white cat Early in the morning Just as day is dawning He picks up all the post bags in his van Postman Pat, Postman Pat Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing And the 
day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock, ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. What lovely weather for people on holiday, said Pat. Every summer lots of visitors came to Greendale to walk in the hills and camp in the valley. They were talking about the visitors when Pat arrived to collect the day's post. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Fine day. Morning, Pat. Yes, and a busy one too. Plenty of post for the visitors. The Jacksons are staying up at Burkhouse Cottage. There are some letters for them, so don't forget the extra call, will you, Pat? Oh, yes, and there's a registered letter for those campers up at Southland's farm. They'll have to sign for that. I do hope you catch them in. And a parcel for Granny Dryden. I wonder what that can be. <laughs> it's a busy time with all these people on holiday, said Pat. I'll be glad when it's my holiday. Have a good day, Pat. I will. Cheerio! Morning, Miss Hubbard. Morning, Pat. his letters all along the valley. At Burkhow Cottage, the Jacksons were away, but someone had left the gate open. And something unfortunate happened. By the time Peter Fogg found the sheep, it was too late. When Pat arrived with the letters, he saw the sheep in the garden and decided to help. He'd chased sheep before. Yes, said Peter. I don't know what Mr. Jackson will say. It isn't your fault, said Pat. People should close gates properly. I bet they won't do that again. No. Anyway, thanks for helping. Cheerio.
The next stop was at Granny Dryden's cottage. She was so pleased to see her parcel, she opened it there and then. It was her new catalogue from Manchester. It was full of pictures of things to buy. Is there anything you'd like to order? Let's have a look. Ah. He chose a digital watch with a musical alarm. That's a funny watch. It doesn't look like a watch at all to me. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. It doesn't even need winding. It'll help to keep me on time. Goodbye. Pat was on his way. He had to go up the hill to Intake Farm with a letter for George Lancaster. George didn't often get letters, so he was very pleased to see this one. Um, you'll be passing the campers, won't you? said George. Could you take them some eggs? Yes, that's all right. I've got a letter for them, so I'll have to stop there anyway. George went for the eggs. What beauties, said Pat. I must take care not to drop them, especially if they're all in one basket. Cheerio! Hello? Anyone at home? That's a nuisance. They must have gone off for a walk. Well, I can tuck the eggs under here. They'll be all right. But what about this registered letter? I can't leave that. It looks too valuable. And they'll have to sign for it. I wonder if Miss Hubbard knows where they've gone. Miss Hubbard's cottage was just across the field, so Pat walked over to see if she was at home. He was lucky. She'd just cycled back from the village. Pat told her about the special letter. She knew where the campers were, all right. They've gone off to see the Gategill waterfalls, she said. They asked me the way this morning. Oh, dear. That's at least six miles, and my van can't go along that old track. I'll borrow a tractor from the farm, said Miss Hubbard. Uh, I can't drive a tractor. Don't worry, I can. And off she went for the tractor. Pat wasn't sure that he wanted to ride on a tractor, but there was no other way. So he climbed on and off they went. It was a very exciting ride, and a rough one in places. Hold on tight. Oh, that hurts. 
Oh, heck. Oh. Oh, hey, up. Careful. Only two more miles to go. Oh, thank goodness for that. Pat was glad when they stopped, but when he climbed down, he was almost too stiff and sore to take the letter to the campers. And then they had to go all the way back again. Pat was glad when at last he got back to his van. But what was Jess looking at in the back? It was one of George Lancaster's hens. It had got in somehow and laid an egg. She'll have to stay there until tomorrow, said Pat. But the egg, <laughs> the egg will do nicely for my tea. Pat was on his way home when he spotted a sheep stuck in a fence. So he stopped to let it out. I think that's my last job for today, he said. And off he went. He waved as he passed the Thompsons. They were still hard at work haymaking. Goodbye, Pat. See you tomorrow. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 boom,